<laughs> Hello, everyone. It is lovely to see you all here. Uh, so just a few notes before I start. Uh, first of all, the original conference schedule had me competing against myself with the schedule, so I'm no longer doing that now. But I have just come from another talk. Uh, so if I seem, uh, uh, if I start talking about fan fiction or anything, it's because I still have to switch modes. Um, so today I'm going to talk about managing all of your tasks using Task Warrior. I'm going to talk fairly fast because I've got a lot of material to cover and I've got a half hour time slot. More or less. More, more or less. Okay, well, I, I'm going to set this to be a half hour time slot. Wonderful. Um, show of hands for me, just to, out of curiosity, who in the audience has used Task Warrior before? Oh, a few of you. Who is stuck with Task Warrior? None. One. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, so what is Task Warrior? Why should you care? So my story is that I spend a lot of time procrastinating. This is, this is my top skill. Uh, if you're following the LCA hashtag uh, in the lead up to the conference, you would have seen me saying, oh, I need to write my slides. I need to rehearse my talk. Time to do my laundry. Um, I got to inbox zero out of not wanting to rehearse my slides. It was fantastic. Um, but I'm very, very easily distracted. Um, I have a terrible, terrible memory. And so for me, I don't do anything unless I have some sort of a task management system to help me along with that. And I have worked, or tried to work, with dozens of systems which have been out there. And I have discarded all of them except for the one I'm going to show you today. <coughs> The reason for that is because very often I would find these systems which were simple and easy. They were super easy to pick up, they were easy to use, they were missing features like crazy. That seemed to be a theme. I would also find proprietary systems, and proprietary systems would sometimes be great, but I couldn't add features. And uh, me being me, I'd sort of, you know, open up the, uh, the source code for the website, and I would snoop the JSON calls which are happening, and I would hack things in, but that didn't feel particularly safe. And, and it's not the sort of thing, yes, please never do this. Anyone traveling from overseas, you can buy adapters very, very easily. Um, it didn't feel like it worked with my workflow. The other thing is that I live on my command prompt. Practically all of my time is spent in a shell of some sort. And so when I heard about Task Warrior, which was a shell-oriented task management system, I said, this is great. And people said, well, Paul, you know it's got a bit of a learning curve. And, and I played Dwarf Fortress, which has the biggest learning curve of any game. So that did not scare me. Um, but I do want to sort of uh, uh, begin with a disclaimer that most task systems do not work for most people. Uh, the idea of a task management system is incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, personal. Uh, some things which people go, oh, this is great. Other people would be saying, that is terrible. Why would you ever do that? And most people, when they look at my setup, go, why would you ever do that? Task Warrior is, however, workflow agnostic. Um, and whilst it may not be for you, if it is for you, it's the most awesome thing that you have ever found. <laughs> and, and I use this picture here. I don't, I'm not wearing this today. Uh, but I, I own this sweater. I found this in an op shop, and it is mine. You'll see me in it later on in the conference if, it, if the weather cools down. So what I'm going to show you today with Task Warrior is a tour of features I use the most. And there is a lot of features in Task Warrior. There is no chance that I can cover them all. Instead, I'll be teaching what I know. I am still learning when it comes to Task Warrior. So let's see some examples. So Task Warrior is done entirely on the command line. It is solely a command line tool. And if you want to add a task to your task list, well, there's an add keyword. Task add buy plane tickets, cool, I've created task number one. Um, task add book hotel, task add write a talk, task on, a task, add a, write a talk on task warrior, there's tasks two and three. And if I just write task by itself, then I get this cool little display. Here's the things that you've got to do, here's how old they are, here are their urgency, which I'll come back to. So, to begin with, you can use it as a very, very straightforward to-do list. To mark things as done, you can say task, its number, and done, and then it's gone away. One thing to note here is that tasks get renumbered when you check them off. So rather than having to say, oh, I've done task 983, they will always have human-friendly numbers. If you want machine-friendly numbers, they also have UUIDs, which I don't think I'll have a chance to cover in this talk, but they're very easy to get to. 
So that's great. We've got tasks, but really anyone with a certain number of tasks, with a realistic number of tasks, is going to have a hard time keeping them organized. So ways to do that, uh, one of the most easiest ways is by using tags. Uh, tags are unstructured many-to-many -many concepts. So a task can have many tags, a tag can be attached to many tasks. And the way in which we do that is simply by putting a plus on the task when we, uh, when we create it. So buy a mini screwdriver set plus shopping. Uh, pig client on invoice payment uh, plus phone and plus Cyberdyne. So here I'm just adding tags to things. Um, let's pretend that I made a mistake there. I didn't mean to tag Cyberdyne. I might mean to, uh, to tag Shinra, a completely different evil corporation. Um, I could do this. Task latest modify, remove Cyberdyne, add Shinra. And in fact, that plus latest there is a meta tag. It's the most recent task that I have added or modified. This is absolutely great for searching. Tasks are great for searching. Um, I will do things I don't like making phone calls. And when I have to make phone calls, I like to get them all out of the way at once. So I'll write task plus phone, show me all the phone related tasks I have to do so I can do them all in one go. I tend to use tasks for things like resources which are needed. That might be a phone or a location. For people involved, this is the best thing ever. Um, or for costly tasks, if there's something I should do more often. The reason I say that is the best thing ever is because when someone comes over and says, oh, Paul, I need to talk to you about some things, I can bring up all the tasks I have associated with them, and I can go through all of them. So anytime you're dealing with other humans, it just streamlines how you can manage them. <laughs> this is great. I have aliases for this. I have aliases for people I interact with to show me tasks associated with them. You also get automatic meta ta uh, tags. So the same way that I showed plus latest before, uh, if you have a due date on something, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, you get these automatic meta tags. Is it due within a year? Is it due within a quarter? Is it due within a month? You can also search on negative tags as well and negative meta tags. So I can say, please show me all the tasks which are not scheduled or don't have a project or don't have an until date. And these are all concepts, concepts which I'll show you in a moment. So this can be useful if, you've got, uh, if you're looking for tasks which are missing important information. So I just mentioned projects there. Uh, Task Warrior has an idea of projects. Projects are hierarchical, and they are one to many. So one project can have many tasks, but each task can only be in one project. The way in which you uh, create them is you use a project colon, and then the project is going to be into. And in fact, this is a common thing with Task Warrior. You can add extra information with the information colon and what that happens to be. So here I'm organizing a trip to Mordor. Uh, I need to book some transport. I need to book some accommodation. And I need to re renew my visa so I can get across the, uh, the border um, when I'm going there. And you can see that I've used a hierarchical form here. I've got travel.mordor.logistics and travel.mordor.legal. Um, and I might have travel.newzealand and so on and so forth in my, in my task lists. One neat thing which you can do with Task Warrior um, is that you can search for tasks not just by number and not just uh, uh, by UUID, but also by regular expression. And of course, being a Perl person, I want to do everything with regular expressions. So this is how I manage most of my task lists. Uh, task search for Mordor transport done, and it will tell me that that's done. And it will also say, this project is 50% complete. This is incredibly satisfying when you see the completion rate for your project going up, and it finally reaches 100% if you're really lucky. It's also great for multi-step tasks. If you're having uh, tasks which are nice, achievable goals, which is what you want, then you can put all the related tasks into a project, and you can simply go through them all. Um, if you ask for task projects, you'll get a, a list of all the projects which you've used in a hierarchical fashion. Uh, there is an example of what my uh, travel tasks look like uh, in terms of number and, and, and layout uh, as of late last year. And of course, I can do things like, please show me only the tasks in a particular project if I want to. Uh, so all of my conferences, all of my travels will have a travel project. If you're moving house, which I'm in the process of doing, doing now, uh, projects are fantastic. And in fact, I have uh, aliases to show me just the house moving things. And in fact, with the idea of aliases, that brings us on to this cool idea of contexts. So if you're at work, you probably want to be seeing different tasks than when you're at home, which is probably going to be a different set of tasks when, uh, as opposed to when you're playing Dwarf Fortress. 
And uh, what I want to show you is that you can have all of your tasks in Task Manager in the same program and not go completely, uh, completely silly by that. So here I can define some contexts. Uh, when I'm at work, I only want to see project work things. Uh, when I'm working for a particular client, I'm going to narrow that down to a particular client. I find that really useful so I don't get distracted by other clients' tasks. Because uh, I work from home, it's really easy to get distracted by other things. Um, I have a, a personal context, so things which are not work uh, and things which are also not fun. So that's things like paying bills, for example. Uh, that would be an example of that. And then finally, I have a fun context, which is anything tagged with fun or anything in the project fun. And that's when I want to relax. And then I can switch between them very easily. I can just say task context, Cyberdyne, or personal, or fun. And whenever I do a, uh, a task or interaction, it'll filter it down into that particular context. And of course, there's extra commands to show you all the contexts uh, and list them and, and turn them off and so on and so forth. Taking notes. Um, very often when I'm working through tasks, I want to make little notations on the tasks to remember things. Maybe I had a phone call, uh, maybe there's a person that I spoke to, maybe there's some notes I need to take. Uh, in Task Warrior, these are called annotations, and they're really easy to do. You can simply say task, the number of the task, or a way of identifying the task, the word annotate, and then what you want to put down as an annotation. Uh, so here I've got an annotation, which is don't forget to discuss annotations. But one of the most common things I use these for is if I have a phone call with someone, because I don't like phone calls, is to write down who I spoke to and what the result was of that conversation, so I don't have to call them back at all. Um, if you look at your task lists and there are annotations, you will see those annotations as part of the list. So here you can see I've got a timestamp there, don't forget to discuss annotations. This is really, really useful because that auto timestamping means you don't have to say, oh, when did I write this? Or when did I have that phone call? By default, that gets shown on your tasks in the summary lists, but I don't like that. Um, you can actually modify all of the task warrior reports, and you can use this term called description.count, which simply says, show me how many annotations are there. And so here I've got an example of doing that. You can see the square brackets two at the end simply says there are two annotations on this task. So I can record annotations as I go. Uh, when the task is done, it's completed. You can also say task done and something, and it will complete the task and add that annotation as well, which is really useful if you ever need to go back to your notes on the task. You can see why it was completed. More things with Task Warrior. Uh, working with dates. Uh, usually we have tasks which need to be done by a certain time uh, or have certain priorities associated with them. Um, so I'm going to use the example of birthday cards. Um, so this is, this is not my dad's birthday. I love my dad. I'm not going to dox him uh, in a public talk. Um, but let's pretend this was my dad's birthday and I wanted to send him a birthday card. Um, this would be a way that I could do it. So what's that wait keyword doing? Well, the wait keyword says hide my task until this date. So it'd be weird if I sent my, dad a sent my dad a birthday card nine months before his birthday. So, so let's wait until it's approximately his birthday before I send the card. And of course, there's a, a report to see uh, all of the waiting tasks if I want that. I can also use, when working with dates, I can use relative dates. So I could say, hey, take this task and modify it until, wait until tomorrow. In other words, I don't want to see it until the next day. I can say, uh, please wait this five extra days, so don't show me this task for the next five days. And, um, but what's actually really useful is not just hiding tasks, but also scheduling them. And a scheduled task is urgency boosted on and after the date which you specify. So here, don't show me this until, don't show me this until the 12th, and schedule me to actually send the card on the 15th. So I get a little bit of advance notice that it's coming up, and then it gets an urgency boost once that scheduled date has, has rolled around. If you don't want to see the tasks coming up, uh, there is a report called Task Ready, which only shows you things which are past their scheduled dates or don't have a scheduled date. Um, this is very handy because I can say, OK, I'll do this thing on Monday, and then I don't have to see it in my task list until Monday when it gets an urgency boost, when I actually uh, have more of a motivation to run it. And uh, related to all of these is the until keyword, which is probably my favorite keyword in Task Warrior. 
So what until does is it says that if I reach that date, delete the task. If I have not sent my dad a birthday card, if I am a bad son, and it's way past his birthday and I haven't sent him a card, just delete it from my task list automatically. Don't make it weird. So, so this is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. And you can also have relative dates as well. So I can do things to say, hey, this is due on a particular date. Uh, schedule it to be three days before the due date. So three days before my dad's birthday, I should send that card. Wait until six days before, before it even shows up on any of the reports. And if it's been three days after dad's birthday, then make it go away. You can also do this relative to other tasks as well. And this becomes very, very powerful because if you have something like a flight or a conference date or something else, you can mark, mark tasks relative to that event. So I might have uh, a conference which has an ID of eight, and I could say, hey, I want to book flights and schedule to do this 30 days before the conference happens. And if I still haven't booked those flights and it's the day of the conference, well, it should just go away and I'm probably in trouble. As you can imagine, this is amazing for scripting. Um, one thing which I haven't done yet, but which I want to do, is whenever I'm going to a conference, I want to say, you know, Task Warrior, new conference, whatever, and it sets up all the things I need to do. Arrange my flights, arrange my accommodation, um, make sure that, uh, you know, all of my travel documents are up to date, so on and so forth. Because I have these things which repeat again and again and again. I've also used the word urgency a few times. Um, some tasks are more important than others. And in Task Warrior, this is a calculated uh, value. So if I say that something is due on a certain day, maybe it's due in seven days, then that task which is due sooner will receive a higher urgency. So booking a hotel has no due date, it's got a low urgency, writing a, a talk on Task Warrior has a higher urgency because of that due date. How is it calculated? Uh, well, tags, projects, deadlines, priorities, all of these things give you more urgency, but you can configure every part of this. So I can do things to say that if something has a costly tag, it gains an extra three points of urgency. Or if it has a leisure tag, it gains no points of urgency. Normally tags give you one extra point. And of course, if I look at a task, it can give me all the stuff which is in there. Related to this is an idea of priority. Um, I can say things have high priority, or I can shorten that down to uh, just prize H if I want. And this is the thing which most people are familiar with, this idea of high, medium, low, and none, although I actually prefer to rearrange those, high, medium, none, the default, and then low. If I haven't given something a priority, it's got this sort of middling priority. And because everything is configurable, I can write things in my Task Warrior RC, which simply say, here's my priority values, high, medium, nothing, and low, and here's the coefficients which they gain. Um, here I'm just swapping the low and empty coefficients from their defaults. But the real reason that I love Task Warrior more than anything else is for the tools and plugins which it has. So uh, Task Warrior has a third party tool called Task Open, which is free and open source, and it opens resources in annotations. And this is so incredibly convenient. So I can do something like have a task to uh, track my tooth flossing on Beeminder, which is another productivity tool, and I can annotate that with a URL. And if I then say task open with that ID, it will open up the Beeminder URL for me. So it spots the URL and it opens that up in my browser, which is fantastic. If I have a task to finish a report and I link that to a spreadsheet or something and I run task open, it fires up LibreOffice for me and so I can then work on finishing that report. This is my favorite though, if I annotate something with the word notes, with nothing else, just the word notes, and I task open it, it opens it up in Vim, and I can write as much as I want, or whatever your editor happens to be, but Vim is the best. You can, <laughs> you can write as many notes as you want there, and they're stored against the task. And I do lots and lots and lots of writing notes against tasks, this is perfect. It also has lots of options, but I don't have time to show them here. The other thing which is amazing with Task Warrior is you can work with other people. So it would be crazy if I had to sort of, you know, ask all of my coworkers and colleagues to use Task Warrior as well. Um, but instead I get them to use, you know, sort of more regular tools like, like Jira and GitHub and Trello. 
And there's this cool thing called Bug Warrior, which is written in Python, and it gives you access to everything. And when I found this, I was just over the moon. It was amazing. So what does it let you hook into? Um, I use these for GitHub, Trello, Jira, and Gmail. Uh, so if you send me an email, that can go onto my task list. But it also hooks into everything else, Bugzilla and GitLab and Track and Garrett and stuff I've never heard of. It's amazing. And this means I can have all of my tasks in one place. And this has been my dream forever, that I don't have separate task lists for work and for Dwarf Fortress and for home and for my guild and for all of these other sorts of things. I have them all in one place. And you do this simply by setting up a Bug Warrior RC with some configuration. Um, so here's what that looks like for GitHub. Um, I turned this on once and it gave me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tasks because it was all the pull requests and bug reports and everything else for all the software and I got very scared and turned it off. <laughs> but in theory, you could load everything in from GitHub and um, you simply have your login and you have a token and it pulls it all in. Um, I use Trello with my partner. Uh, Trello is really, really good for like writing little to-do things. And so I have stuff like this. I have Trello Kate. Um, it's a services Trello. I've got some secret things there. If something's in a done list, it's not a task. Um, and I want to include specific boards so I can have them uh, be categorized into certain projects later on. The other thing which is important is I don't want tasks to show up unless they've actually been assigned to me. Because these are shared boards, unless it's been assigned to me, it's probably not my task or I don't need to be doing it. So I can add that in there as well. I can also customize the title and the project, which come in from uh, Bug Warrior uh, configurations. Um, so here I can say that uh, I've got a t description template, which is the name of the Trello card. So whatever the name of the Trello card is, that's what turns up on my Task Warrior list. By default, it will be something like square brackets Trello whatever. I don't want the square brackets Trello. I just want its name. Um, and likewise, I'm going to give it a project, which is cake.trello. Um, so it gives me a project. And that can be uh, set on a per board basis. So we have a, a board for moving house. Everything goes into a moving project because of that. And the neat thing is, if something is then marked as done in Trello, or you close the bug on GitHub, or you do those other things, it also gets marked done in Task Warrior as well. So you don't have to be uh, closing things in two places. You can just close it in one place. It fits in with workflows really, really nicely. Something which was absolutely game-changing for me was being able to set this up with Gmail. And if something is pinned or if something is starred, if you want to use that mechanism, it turns up on my task list automatically. So if I pin something, if I intend to work on it later, it shows up in GitHub. And again, yeah, it's cool. And again, you can also manipulate descriptions there. Uh, I have a Gmail colon and the email subject when that goes into my uh, task list. But I've also said, hey, don't modify the description if I've modified it. Because usually people don't have good subject lines. I can go and change those. You can enable and disable services. Uh, so you can uh, have a service which you no longer use. You just remove it from that list of targets, and it's gone. The last thing which I want to talk about um, is how I ignore my to-do lists. Every time, yes, every time I get a to-do list, I go, this is great, I use it for a little while, and then I start ignoring it. So what's the thing I can't ignore when I'm at my laptop? I cannot ignore my shell, because I spend all of my time in my shell. So what I ended up doing is shell prompt integration. <laughs> I have, I have uh, um, uh, Task Warrior integrated into my shell prompt. So cool thing, Bash RC, some of you might have heard of it. Uh, I start off by setting a few variables in there. I have a, a, a variable for urgent tasks, so this will actually change uh, what is on my prompt. So if I've got urgent tasks waiting, it's an exclamation mark. If I have something due tomorrow, I have a, a little calendar. Uh, lots of people have commented that, that my shell prompt is a slice of cheese. It's not. It's a, it's a little calendar. If something is due today, it is a screaming face. <laughs> And if something is overdue, then I have a skull and crossbones. And, and, and when I see that, it's like, oh, no, <laughs> I've missed something. And then once I've got those, I can simply set up a little function called task indicator. Um, so here I've got an alias, which is just task. Um, that's so that if I want to, I can extend the options which I have on Task Warrior. Um, I'm actually running the development version with a whole bunch of extra features, and so I've got a whole lot of extra stuff which I've sort of uh, uh, put onto that line. 
And then I can simply say, I'm going to run these commands. Um, if I have uh, ready tasks which are overdue and there's more than zero of them, I'll have that overdue prompt, the skull and crossbones. And otherwise, if I have uh, tasks which are due today or due tomorrow or which are urgent, I display those various ones. And if there's nothing which is any of those categories, I just get a regular dollar sign. I have not seen a regular dollar sign in months, but I know that it's there. I know that it can happen. So a few of the options which I've got on there, why have I used them? Uh, well, I've used ready so it doesn't, task, it doesn't count hidden tasks. So anything which I've said I'm waiting until later doesn't count for this. So if I've consciously waited something, it's not going to change my prompt. If I see my prompt being an exclamation mark, it means there's something I need to do which I haven't properly addressed yet. And then once I've got that, I can put it somewhere in my PS1, uh, which determines what my shell prompt looks like. Uh, the dollar sign uh, round brackets there means that every time the prompt runs, it reruns that function, and it reruns Task Warrior up to four times. And Task Warrior is just fast enough that you don't notice, which is wonderful. Of course, that's not my whole prompt. Uh, my whole prompt is really scary and has a whole bunch of Git integrations, so we're not going to show you that. Now, I know that I've got less than five minutes left, so I'm just going to briefly mention a few of the things that Task Warrior has that you can play with if you're, if you're working with it. It has these cool graphical reports, um, which I just like because they look awesome. Um, so this here is a burn down graph. Uh, the height of the graph is how many tasks I've had over all, and the, the red section down the bottom is how many I've got left to go. Um, this is intended to be uh, used with projects. So you can see how your project's growing over time and how you're managing to, to burn off all the tasks. It has a G history thing uh, where you can see uh, the history of all your tasks in a graphical format. Um, it has a calendar if you happen to like calendars with scheduled tasks marked on them. Uh, it does YAML exports if you want to export data from it. Under the hood, you've got things in, in JSON. It has a DOM uh, model for interrogating things. And you can build your own reports as well. There are also, if you dig into Task Warrior, you can hook things into it. So I have a hook where it automatically commits uh, all of my files to Git every time I change something in Task Warrior. Um, so uh, essentially all the Task Warrior files into Git. So if I make a huge mistake, I can just roll them back. But you can also do things with recurring tasks. You can also do things with advanced filters. Um, there's online synchronization. There is a Task Warrior client for Android. And uh, there is a cool website called inthe.am which allows you to have an online view of Task Warrior um, in addition to your Android view if you have it and your command line view. Now, of course, here I've only shown you a fraction of the things which Task Warrior can do. Um, and I warn you now, Task Warrior has a steep learning curve. You should expect learning to take time. But one of the great things about Task Warrior is that it grows with you. Everybody, thank you very much. plug in at the moment. Oh, yes, of uh, course. Then, uh, we can take some questions while, uh, while that happens. OK, um, here and then here. Hi, Paul. I'm curious as to how much uh, time you spend fiddling with the uh, urgency coefficients. Sorry, the question was how much time have I spent fiddling? With the urgency coefficients. Not that much. Uh, urgency coefficients, I found, worked pretty well out of the box. So I've set a couple of things with projects and a couple of things of tags, but the rest are just wonderful. One of the nice things with urgency is the closer you get to a due date, it asymptotically increases the urgency to the due date and then beyond the due date as well. So usually I'm, I'm very much a sort of due date driven person. Um, so the, the most due thing is the thing I'm usually working on. Um, so no, I haven't spent too long fiddling with them. They've been wonderful. Any other so, questions? No, Paul. Up here. Oh, oh yes. Hello. Does um, Task Warrior support dependencies at all? So if one task needs to be completed before another? Oh, yes. So the question was, does Task Warrior support dependencies? Absolutely, it does. Uh, it supports multiple dependencies. Um, if you have, I didn't have time to show it here, um, but you can have it so that if something is waiting on something else, that something else gets a priority boost. And you can also have dependency urgency inheritance. So if A depends upon B and B is really urgent, A becomes really urgent as well. And that is like it's made for me. It's wonderful. So yes, it does dependencies. Yes? Is it written in Perl? Um, <laughs> so the question was, is Task Warrior written in Perl? One, one word. 
One word answer. No. Okay, everybody, please don't pull <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>